but when they believe that they have a time to take a break, take a breather, be kids, be teenagers, mm -hmm. they do it. There are so many scenes in that game where it's just slice of life, just yeah. character development, just enjoying the moment for what it is. Tons of them. Yes. And then Golan added even more. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone and welcome to the Autumn Colors podcast, the podcast that exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. I'm your host, the proprietor of this establishment, who also ejaculates from their nose, the Art Sosa Show. Today I'm joined with a very special guest, the captain of all butt punchers, Kagado, the final <laughs> boss. The captain of the butt punchers, yes! <laughs> uh, well, I'm However, I have uh, deigned to actually uh, appear with... Uh, without my costume, I am, I am here just as my normal self, but... Uh, do not worry, the costume will be donned, and there will be put punches throughout they, the land. As they say, the only thing they fear is you. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we are going to be talking about Persona 3 through 5. Um, if it happens in the future sometime with either of us, 1 and 2 possibly. I do have something to say about 1 specifically, but we'll get to that later on. Um, okay. Okay. Yep. In regards to Persona 5, because I know you're like you're not finished with it, Royal will be skipped. So we in regards to Persona 5, we will be talking about vanilla and strikers. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I will have just some comments about Royal, only because of what I've experienced so far and why it's been taking so long for me to do it. Oh, it, uh, but you, uh, yeah, but you, I won't go into too many details on like overall feelings of the entire game since I haven't finished it yet. Yeah, uh, I was I, I, I like had this because I've said this that I've had this like planned out for about two years and I've been really patient and everything. Um, I've had this sort of some of these points like kind of written down from before. Um, and it's just like, if you want to feel comfortable talking about certain things about Royal or what you think about it, um, overall, uh, just what you can or what you want to, that's perfectly fine. It's just... Yeah, it, I'm okay with that because there, even with the little bit that I've, uh, uploaded to my channel, I actually am as far as, uh, uh my wife and I have beaten Monorame already. Uh, but I, I still have a lot to say that, uh, about Royal. Especially comparing it to previous Persona experiences, I just can't say how I overall feel about the game since I haven't beaten it yet. It's just more of like a how I feel about it so far. That's kind of perfectly fine. So, yeah, we're going to get into that. But the first things first, like I said, uh, before starting this, there is a genuine tradition that goes around. And there's the simple question. How are you doing? I am doing much better than I have been in a very long time. Hmm. Um, which is odd to say, considering what has happened over the past summer. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of it, but uh, uh, essentially it's... Uh, I won't go into full details on the podcast, but there has been a loss in the family. Hmm. And uh, over the course of the summer, it's been a lot of um, taking care of business. And however that business has led to the doors opening to a bigger and brighter future. So there was at the very least that. So it has been a rough time, but at the very least it's, uh, the sun is rising. We'll put it up, we'll put it that way. All right. Yeah. Um, overall, I, I mentioned this a little earlier, but I'm, I'm doing all right. I am understandably so stressed out because it's, I, um, I'm moving currently and it's not just that, but it's also, I am in back in school now and I'm also having to deal with my folks who are like semi, oh, you, you, you can just wait on like packing this stuff up or packing that stuff up and also, hey, you got to get this out of the door right now. And it's just like, it's like, <laughs> I'm, it's, I'm, I'm trying to deal with it in bits and pieces. Um, and yeah, uh, it's, 
uh, it's overall it's just like it is what it is and I am just managing here and there but overall I'm I'm doing fine for right now that's good to hear that's very good to hear and uh moving's tough so take it at the best pace that you can don't overexert yourself because I've had to move out of a house in one week's time and uh oh boy so yeah, uh, don't, are... don't, don't rush until it's getting to the point where you have to get out. Yeah, we have less than a month uh, to get out. That sounds a little quick, but it's just, it's still like it's it's significant time. But then uh, when we were getting our stuff set out, all of a sudden the house like there's a cable line from our neighbors that is just kind of hanging and we're having trouble talking with the cable company like, hey, can you do can you fix it so that we can get out of here and like, my folks are on the verge of, like, you know what? If they're not going to do anything, we might as well just cut it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delightful. Always having to worry about the timing of the cable company. Actually giving a damn long enough to want to actually come out and do something for a change. It's like, just cut it. It's not like we're going to live here anymore. Let them deal with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, precisely. <laughs> okay. So, well, that's, uh, that's, I, I generally like asking that question because it's always just, like, I don't know, I think it's personally kind of an underrated question in the grand scheme of things. It really is, because everybody is always going through something, well, positive or negative, but going through something, and, uh, sometimes it feels good to express what's going on. Speaking of expressing what's going on, let's talk about the meat and potatoes of this, and that is Persona. Now, before we get really into the whole meat of things, uh, do you want to talk about your background around Persona? Like, how you got into it, or how you heard about it? Oh, sure. Uh, so, when it comes to video games, RPGs, and the like, mm -hmm. uh, I essentially have only really gotten a little bit into RPGs back in the PlayStation 1 era. Of course, I played Super Mario RPG before that. Then Star Ocean 2 came after that, and then I discovered Final Fantasy. So basically all the mainstream stuff and maybe a little bit of side stuff. Persona, Shin Megami Tensei, never on the radar. Never heard of it before. So there was a point when I was asked to go and dog sit and house sit for my sister mm -hmm. because this was right at the time where I had, I believe it was a, uh, a good month time off for a summer vacation mm -hmm. and I didn't have anything else to do at the time. So I brought, of course, my game consoles to keep myself busy and there was a GameStop nearby. I was thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to be here, I might as well get something that's going to last a long time and is going to be entertaining enough for me to, you know, kill the hours with. Mm -hmm. So, really, I went over and I was taking a look through the PlayStation 2 games, and I came across Persona 3 and Persona 4. Mm -hmm. And as I was looking at them, I brought up my phone, and I took a look online, and sure enough, they were actually uh, well-received. I'm like, okay, I don't know what these are, but... It looks interesting. They seem to be very, very long, which is what I was really looking for. Mm -hmm. So I decided to pick them both up. Okay. And I started with Persona 3 because I always like to start with the earlier games first mm -hmm. uh, and uh, work my way up. And uh, yeah, I was addicted immediately. Mm -hmm. I popped that thing in and I would wake up spend all day playing, go to sleep, wake up, play some more, and quite literally, since I was only there to house sit and dog sit, other than taking care of the dogs, that was all I did. And I was very happy with the length of those games because uh, I think I didn't even touch Persona 4 until the very end of Persona 3, though I didn't finish it. And that's the funny thing. I got to the point where it was near the end of Persona 3, and I'm like, okay, I'll probably finish this up, but let me go ahead and start a Persona 4 playthrough because I have a horrible, horrible habit of never finishing something mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to like a, a video game that I like because it's like, oh, well, if I beat it, then it's over. <laughs> I don't want it to be over. Yeah. That was probably a big mistake because I started Persona 4 and uh, I fell in love with that far more than I did with 3. Mm. And 
I went all the way through four. Just did not stop. Wow. Okay. And that's what got me into the series. Yeah. Uh, personally, for me, it's funny because my uh, it's kind of a similar story for me in a way, but um, for me, it's kind of like I'd say that mixed with an Abbott and Costello reference. <laughs> because, um, like, okay, I have been interested in, like, uh, video games quite a bit. I grew up in, like, I grew up in the mid-2000s. Like, one of my first real experiences with video gaming was Grand Theft Auto 3. When I was three years old, my parents were kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> my, my mom would not let me watch the kung fu scenes in The Matrix, but she was fine with me watching the scene with, like, Neo getting the thing taken out of his belly button, and Grand Theft Auto 3. I... I don't know. Yeah, I... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My only guess is maybe she thought it's a video game. It doesn't look as realistic. <laughs> it, maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Or maybe she had absolutely no idea. Those called Grand Theft Auto, so <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, my sister said it was good for the grand copies. <laughs> I don't know. Come on in, children, let's play some Grand Theft Auto! <laughs> hey, you see that? Hey, 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 little Timmy, see that hooker over there? Drive over. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. Daddy, what's she doing? Uh, don't worry about it, son. You'll understand when you're older. Just go along with it. Anyway, um, I also came into other games such as uh, I, Final Fantasy and Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, stuff like that. Um, when it came to RPGs, usually what was on my radar was Pokemon, but mm -hmm. Persona 3, like, the I had, I had heard about it, but it was always that game where it's just like, it was always kind of that niche thing, because during the point in time, like, Persona 3 was out, Persona 4 was out, it wasn't as a big of a like cult it didn't have as big of a cult following as it does now but when you know persona 3 and 4 came out it's just like i heard about it i heard some things about it every now and then like i saw it pop up and listen like top 25 video game weapons that don't actually kill with the evoker being on one of them so it's just like really <laughs> yeah <laughs> which uh is a little it's like here or there depending on how you want to look at that but sure <laughs> but I'm surprised they call it a weapon considering well I guess okay it's a it's a gun quote unquote but uh it's not used as a weapon well I guess it kind of is it summons okay I'm <laughs> yeah. too deep into that <laughs> okay and uh, the which leads into the whole thing is just like I had I, I mentioned this before but it was just like it was during the point in time in high school and whatnot where I was having to deal with like overzealous JoJo fans so on and so forth and tried watching JoJo's did not like it but then i heard it's mm. like wait 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 i heard of this other series that was kind of similar to what i thought per jojo's was and i looked into it I was like oh persona and then i looked at and i called up one of my other friends uh and he was like a big like anime game nut so i was like hey um so i was interested in getting to the series persona uh could you tell me what's it about like what exactly is persona and it's just like this is where the re where the, kind of the Abin Costello thing comes in. It's just like, well, Persona is about a group of teens going into this other world, and then they're defeating shadows with the powers of these Persona and changing their own hearts. It's just like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, so wait, 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 what, 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 what are, what are, what are Personas? It's like, well, they're like, they're, they're actual like shadows of the one self. It's like, okay, but um, I thought we were like killing shadows. And he was like, oh no, no, it's like, uh, well, yes, technically, but I mean, like shadows are like clumps of human desire. And I was like, wait, 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 hold on, we're, we're killing humans? What? It's like, oh god, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, you don't understand. It's just see, it's just it's basic desire, and it's just like the, the shadows are the bad people. It's just like. Wait, I, what, what? I, I, I thought personas were shadows. Are we the bad guy? Just kept going on and on. And interestingly enough, through that, I was just like, I am so confused and not following any of this that I kind of want to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what we're talking about. I better see for myself. Oh, that's what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what this is about. You son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> So I 
looked into the series a little bit here and there. I tried what I believe was the first game, like, because I because I saw, like, okay, there are four games in a row. Are they all linear? It's just, I didn't really get much answer on that, but... So I tried Persona 1. Um, at the time, I didn't have a PlayStation 2, so I had to emulate it. Uh, that was a train wreck and a half. Um, yeah, it was. it's quite literally Shin Megami Tensei with a different name. That, but also, I also have problems with, like, trying the first level... And then after that, all of a sudden getting a black screen and then everything restarting. Oh. So, yeah, it was a train wreck and a half. And I was just like, I, what? It's just like, so then I thought, okay, maybe things will make sense if I try Persona 2. It did. And then I got a decent amount. I forget how far in. I got a decent amount in. I was a little confused here and there, but I was following it. And then I come back to it one day. My save data is corrupted. Can recover. Oh uh, no! Yeah, I was like, oh my god, is, is this gonna? Is this my life now? So I was like, okay, the, as like third times the charm, this has to be where it's just like this gotta be. I I don't care how if it's good or bad. I just want to complete this freaking game. I played Persona Three and it was like, well, I I finished it. That's one good thing. So I was really glad of that. But when I played Persona 3, I was like, oh my god, this is, like, right up my alley. This is dark. This is psychological. It's just, I really liked the story and just the lengths it was going to. And I mm -hmm. was really getting into it. And I was like, okay, you know what? I, I was like, all right, I kind of see what this is about. And then I was like, and then I was like, looking into Persona 4, and I was like, I was playing it. And I was like, okay, you know what? This is different, but honestly... I kind of like what it's going for. It, it, there's a lot of different themes it's tackling. I like the characters. Um, it, it's, it does feel a little confusing here and there, but overall, it's just like, it was something that I really liked. And then I watched the anime, and I was just like, oh my god, this is so much better than the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it pretty much it was just like, I, I, I was months and even years, years actually behind this, and then eventually I heard about Persona 5 and just how it took off, played that, and it was just like, this is when I really felt like I was dead set on really wanting to be in the game and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, nowadays, I'm, uh, I'm still loving the series, it's just like, I, I, I feel what I think some people call the honeymoon phase has kind of worn off, and like, I can see like, you know, I criticize the game and the franchise and everything, but I still love it. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense, because I've had that as well. So, I know exactly how you feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, with that out of the way and everything, and thank you for sharing your input on that. Mm hmm So, let's talk about Persona 3. So, do you want to give your thoughts about, like, what you thought about Persona 3, ultimately? Persona 3, for me, of course, was the game that started it all for the Persona franchise. And as I mentioned before, I played it and was absolutely addicted to it up until the very end. I mean, comparatively speaking, uh, with the other games now, uh, 4 and 5, uh, 3 is definitely showing some of its um, age as far as its gameplay elements and the like. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the upcoming remake tackles some of those things. Mm -hmm. But it was still a well-done game. It had so much going on that kept me addicted because it was something that I have only experienced one other time and that is through my favorite game of all time at the time Star Ocean 2 whereas there's RPG gameplay fighting and such but there's also relationship building with your teammates mm -hmm. uh, through uh, uh, through social links and that would affect the relationships that you have with them. And in this case, also uh, romantic relationships. Although, of course, in this in Persona 3, it, it didn't really matter. You just go one through ten and then you're done. You can have all the girls in the damn party yeah. um, and everyone else. But I thought it was a well done story. It was dark. It was something that I was kind of needing at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, just something that is unique and different and smart at the very least mm -hmm. um i mean there was some uh at, for at least for me with the rpgs that i played at the time it felt smarter and uh treated me a little bit more like an adult rather than oh, a bunch of teenagers going off to save the day 
Which is kind of funny that I say that because that's kind of what Persona 4 ended up doing, but I think that was also <laughs> like uh, the palette cleanser that I needed from 3. <laughs> so uh, it was it was just a fantastic time. I enjoyed it. There was uh, there's really nothing negative I can truly say about because the one that I played was the FES version, which came with the uh, the bonus mm -hmm. story, the answers, which not a lot of people really enjoyed. And it was very grindy, but the whole overall package I greatly enjoyed, and uh, it has a very significant place in my heart when yeah. it comes to gaming. Yeah. Personally, for me, like, I... It, Persona 3, definitely, when it comes to the story, is one of my favorites. That said, it does have... I do acknowledge that it does have its flaws, especially, like you said, with the social links and the romance and aspect and everything. But I do, like, in, in its defense, I mean, it was, like, the first game of the series that was, like, trying to do something like that so like i can give it a little leeway because it was just yeah. like yeah it was the first time like we'll, we'll get it right the next time and they actually sort sort of like improved more and more uh that said like i'll i'll go more into my criticisms about the social links later but um overall it's just like in regards to like uh persona 3 i think what really looking back i think what really like caught my attention ultimately um, was the formula that it was setting up. Granted, it does have, uh, not the best written characters, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, okay, like, I, I made this point when I replayed it, it was just, like, Ikutsuki is so, it's just, like, he doesn't add much of anything to the actual story, even as a whole, like, manipulator mastermind it's just yeah like, yeah it doesn't i i literally when i went through my playthrough of it like recently after hearing about royal i was like okay you know what i just gotta make up some stuff just to make people hate him and so it's like okay he breaks into the girls dorms and sniff their underwear yeah it's disgusting but at least it's good enough to hate him yeah true <laughs> yeah it, it... Yeah, I I felt the same way about Kikutsuki. It's like it's his heel turn was straight the fuck out of nowhere. Yeah. And what made it worse is that the game didn't even take time to stew on that. He no. revealed himself as a bad guy and then died in the exact same night. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a bad guy now. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Why would they just find a way to write around a script? Sure, why not? <laughs> so, like, yeah, okay. I, I, I will say for that whole portion, like, you could have literally taken out a Kutsuki, and you could have kept the whole thing with, well, actually, uh, the whole Shadows becoming the 13th and the arrival of Nyx. It was actually the, it was actually when we were playing about the old time and everything with Strega, and it was like, I don't think you would lose anything. But that said... Pretty much, I think what, uh, looking back, what I really thought was interesting about Persona 3 is just how, out, like, how big it felt. Like, characters mm -hmm. lived their own lives. You had the whole thing with Chidori and Junpei. You yes. Had, yeah. You ha and which I'm, I, like, in terms of reload, I'm really hoping that they add more. Like, I want to see scenes where it's like, Junpei and the others go on a trip, and then as soon as they come back, Junpei is, like, talking to her about the trip and everything. Just some little details like that to, like, because I already love the relationship. I want to see explored more. I want to see expanded more. Yeah, they actually did talk about what he's done with her in 3, the original. Yeah. Uh, but you don't see it. You're, you're never a part yeah. of it, which, on one hand, makes sense. You're not there. They're having mm -hmm. a private moment. You're the main character, so you're not in the screen. But at the same time, it's nice to see that character dynamic anyway, because, yes, you're playing as the main character, but you're not the only important person here. Yes. So it is, this is why Junpei is my favorite uh, best friend out of all the three known best friends. Yeah. Um, uh, Yosuke um, and uh, uh, Ryuji yeah. are great, but Junpei, I felt like was fleshed out the most. And his, the romance with Chidori was actually really, well, real, I felt. Yeah. And when Nothing it comes... forced. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it came to the characters, and I really like this, is that um, it's like, this is not really um, too much of a dig on three and four, on like four specifically, because that was going for its own thing. 
but with three, I really felt like it was kind of going more for the along the lines of the main character getting wrapped up in things instead of being like the cause and effect of everything. Like they literally mm. state that everything about Tartarus, the Dark Hour, has been going on for literal decades or like at least a decade or literally years this is in the main character coming into play is like un, has like a major significance to this story it's not just main character comes to this town and all of a sudden weird stuff start happen no 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 main character comes to this town gets caught up in this and all of a sudden like as things seem to like clear up and everything like it reveals that no, actually, the main character served a bigger purpose for this. I don't know. I I really like that take with three. And also, I do want to mention, I think Nyx is one of the most interesting final bosses when it comes to the game because, like, compared to four and five, Nyx wasn't bad. Nyx wasn't actually herself bad. It wasn't because the Nyx we f the the characters fight in the final boss is just it's Ryoji just as Nyx's voice and appearance. Nyx mm. themselves is doesn't really have a form, doesn't really have a shape, has no voice or any speeches whatsoever. Nyx literally comes and delivers death because that's, in her story, that is her primary objective. That's, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I liked about it. They never label death as a terrible thing, never label death as a good thing. Death is the natural order of things. It's the natural thing to come in the grand scheme of things. And I like how it didn't try in every way to frame Nyx as this overbearing god where it's like, I will deliver death and you shall accept it. It's just like, it doesn't matter if you want to reject me or accept me. In the end, we're all going to meet the same place. It's just like, I, I actually respect that it went down that route. Yeah, uh, as much grief as I gave Ryoji in my playthrough, it was mostly for laughs, mm -hmm. but the theming of it, the actual story behind it, I truly understood. And uh, it's why I also even now consider Nyx to be the best final boss in the series, yeah. um, both thematically and gameplay wise. Yeah. I also like how like the bad ending, quote unquote, is really like, there really isn't a bad ending because, and I really love this, is that the game doesn't judge you on what you choose. It's just like, you have the choice and people would rather go for one choice or the other, sure. But in the end, it is ultimately your choice. Even when you go against Ryoji, it's just like, look, I don't agree with it, but it is your choice. You made the call. I'm not going to argue with it. Yeah. I like that because it makes me feel like legitimately, you're not trying to like low low t low key like you're not trying to make me feel bad that oh my god did i make the wrong choice oh my god maybe i should have made another choice it's just like i mean okay you made it um sure i guess but i i don't agree but sure let's go with that yeah the, you're talking about the uh the choice to uh kill him or not yeah yeah <laughs> Which oh, I, I will admit, I will fully admit, in the first time I actually did it, I was legitimately, like, the first time I played I was like, it's such a heavy loaded question and a heavy loaded choice, I was just like, what do I want to do? And then I thought about it, I legitimately was curious, so I went with killing him. And interestingly enough, like, yeah, the ending, if you really put it under a microscope and think about it, yeah, it's fucked up. But what it's interesting about it is that it's just either way you go, like... It, in the end, it doesn't necessarily change too much of anything in the grand scheme of things. It only, like, just goes, do you want to speed things up in the grand scheme of things, or do you want to possibly just try to, like, delay it until it can't be delayed any longer? Right. Yeah. And then Which... <laughs> yeah. It was basically, hey, do you want to delay it for a few months? And then forget everything, or do you want to speed it up, but remember everything, but still have a chance to fight back, but you're definitely going to lose. Yeah. But you're not, but you're definitely going to lose, so... And considering that boss battle, it was just like, yeah, I have no doubt they were trying to really make hammer in like that. I, I was... When I first played, I was almost surprised that that was actually a battle I was supposed to win. Yeah, considering how long that fight is. Oh, I mean, yeah. uh, I think on average, that fight takes about... 30 minutes to an hour to beat. 
depending oh, on your it, level. It took, I think it took me a good two hours. Good grief. But to be fair, that was because, okay, wait, wait, wait. This is what they do. Oh shit, what do I, what do I gotta like, what do I gotta prioritize people with? And it's just me doing some mind games. But outside of that, there's also um, FES, which particularly with the answer. Um, and like you said, yeah, a lot of people don't tend to like it. Personally, um, okay, I'll say this. The whole Civil War thing, the whole we have to fight in order to like get our keys and everything. Okay, I will argue this. I don't think, and a lot, I've heard a lot of people say this, I'm not going to point any fingers, but I've heard this comment, I don't think it ruins Yukari's character, because her character is very much centered around, especially with I guess too, her, their characters are centered around the stages of grief, and I see that quite a bit, and it's just like how they're processing grief. So, when it came to the whole fight between I guess and Yukari, like, that alone, I can, I can look the other way on. I can see that because, you know what, there are two characters that want to fight, sure, but I really feel like in the grand scheme of things, if they were to have, I guess, just one-on-one -on -one talk with Akihiko, Ken, Kormaru, Junpei, just talk with them one-on-one -on -one, instead of having to fight them, I really feel like that could have elevated the final fight, at least somewhat. Yeah. Because there's no, there's yeah, no, I agree. there's no reason to fight Junpei and Akihiko and Ken Koromaru. There's no reason. It was, I believe that it was kind of put together very quickly. It was definitely an afterthought because yeah. of course, FES came out later than the original. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was the same writing group or a different one or what, but you can tell that it was something that was just kind of thrown together just to have some kind of extra bonus to re-release the game uh, with uh, this extra story. So yeah. it was sloppily done yeah. compared to the original three. Mm -hmm. It was still fine in the grand scheme of things, but uh, it's just you're comparing quality here. Yeah. And uh, it was it was definitely uh, a lack of quality. Mm. Yeah, but I do ultimately in the end, I do, even though I really wish they would have like built on it more or at least had some more of an epilogue to their epilogue. Um, I do kind of wish in the grand scheme of things is that uh, it's like there was more of a there was there was more of a. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think here. Um, it's all right. <laughs> but ah, right, right. Honestly, I kind of wish like some of the ideas that they were working with, like for example, uh, Metis was better like written. I I, re I really feel like that because in concept, I, I feel like this is kind of the thing with FES and some things it tries to do on paper. I think what it's trying to do is good. In practice, not so much because Metis is kind of like the ping pong character in terms of the writing because she goes back and forth between being like kind of an unlikable bitch to a character that feels pitiful. Yeah. It's I'm just gonna like, be perfectly honest. I completely forgot she existed until you brought her up. Yeah. <laughs> I. I. I just, like, I had to go back and do a little more research into this game, so I had to remember. Um, I will say it's just, like, yeah, it's just, I, I, it's just, Persona 3 doesn't have the best character writing at times, like, as a whole. But yeah. when it comes to certain characters here and there, yeah, okay, that's fine. But as a whole, yeah, a lot of the characters just kind of, Trip down and just yeah. That unfortunately tends to happen when, well, when a character finally kind of reaches the end of their own personal arc. Sometimes writers have a hard time finding out what else to do with them, and mm -hmm. that usually leads to them just being somebody that makes the odd comment here or there in the story, but their part in the story is kind of done. Uh, but at the very least, if they had a good character arc, that's great. They they at least had that. It's, it's what makes them memorable that way. If they never had it to begin with, 
then you have a situation like Metis where I completely forgot that she even existed until you mm -hmm. brought her up. So I think this is one of those situations where they had a very large game to make mm -hmm. with a lot of things to do with them, social links and the like, where you had Persona 2 and Persona 1 and other RPGs in general, where the character development happens throughout the main story and only the main story, and that usually fleshes them out pretty well. Yeah. But you have social links, and that is usually a an extra to go along with a lot of these characters to help them develop, understand how they feel and uh, why they act the way that they do, their likes, dislikes, vices, and basically it delves deeper into the character. So for a lot of the characters in three, uh, it helped, but there were some that clearly had a lot more going on than others. And you didn't even have a chance to really do anything with any of the guys. So yeah. the guys, at uh, you had just the storyline, but the girls, like uh, you had like Mitsuru, mm -hmm. for example, she had, well, she was a forefront in the story of why Tartarus and why she part of sees all that. But then there's more that you get to discover with her through the social links. So yeah. characters like that feel a bit more fleshed out. Yeah. yeah. So and speaking. Speaking of characters, I think it's time we get to the one where I think actually really did nail it, Persona 4. Yep. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, you went uh, first this last time. Uh, I'm going to give my thoughts on Persona 4, honestly, because I got a bit to say. Okay. So one thing I do, I, I think I liked out of the gate about Persona 4 is the kind of... Um, the first little callback, I remember this joke because it was um, when the main character is... Uh, like, getting settled in and everything, and he's walking around with Chie and Yukiko, they say, oh, you just transferred from another school. Oh, wow, I thought your life was way darker. And I was just like, ha, Persona 3. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like that little nod. But other than that, I mean, this, oh my god, you, you, like, if the character writing here or there uh, when it came to Persona 3 was good, depending on, like, kind of case-by-case basis. Talk about a complete overall, because Persona 4 has some of the best written characters, in my opinion, for this. And mm -hmm. it is just... Oh my god. It's just... I... I... Just so many things about it. It's just, like, I really love it. It's just... I... And there's also some things where it's just like, I do feel like this could have been done better, and that is with uh, Golden. Um, but that, I'll get to that in a bit. But what I liked about Persona 4 is that instead of basically doing the same thing of what Persona 3 did, not just in story, but also in like just gameplay, it has a new idea. It's just like, let's have the Midnight Channel. Let's have characters have their own particular dungeon to fight in and better explore their own characters, their own shortcomings, like just the more side that they want to shut out or is more like exaggerated and diluted because of like a lot of things around society. Like, um, and the one thing uh, I've noticed, I'm not, again, not pointing any fingers, one thing I've noticed that tends to come up anytime this game comes into popularity is that people like to side on one way particular with Kanji and Naoto, which... Uh, uh yeah. Yeah, personally, I was just like... It, I, I always go by... It, this game released in, like, the late 2000s, and it was all about the context about it, how, like, Kanji and the whole thing of homosexuality, which... I say this as someone who grew up in the mid-2000s, yeah, this is not too far off the mark where being manly means, like, you couldn't show any weakness, you couldn't, like, do anything that girls found to be more, like, oh my god, oh, why would you do that? That's so, that's, that's not manly of you, and... Yeah. I think... Yeah, this is uh, a product of its time, and times have definitely changed in the past ten years, but people are looking into things different than its intention. Yeah, and I will say, considering the point of Persona 4, I think that's actually helped it stay more relevant. 
because uh -huh. <laughs> because people don't want to hear the truth. They just want to hear what they want to hear. Precisely. That is exactly <laughs> why Persona 4 is still relevant today. Yep. And again, it's just like what I what I really dug about characters like Kanji and Nato was like with Kanji. He was, he absolutely, like, he loved textiles, he loved sewing, but it was evident that he saw his parents and he was passionate about it and he wanted people to accept him for that. And when he didn't get that, it was just like, oh, I guess I gotta act like a delinquent because people just won't accept me. And I was like, you know what? I kind of dig that. And with Naoto, it was like, again, there are, on this one I can give a little leeway because I can, I, I'm not trans myself but i can see some correlation to someone who might be trans and might have some similar uh aspects living their life again not trans i can't speak on behalf of the community or anything but i can speak as a minority especially one who is light-skinned but also is black and has also gotten the comments from people saying that you're not black enough or you don't look black uh... yeah i like it's just, I, I, it's just, I like, in the grand scheme of things, Naoto's story of, in terms of, like, her not being ashamed of who she is, but more so that, and essentially, I think this is kind of something that some people might look over, is that, essentially, and I believe this, if she were to become trans, well, that might be good in the moment for her, I guess, and realistically, that wouldn't change people's perspectives on how they see her if they already hate her for being a kid. Like, that would just give him more fuel to the fire, if anything. But I will... Yeah. I will add extended olive branch. If Kanji, if Naoto, after everything is said and done... Hell, even in Golden. If, after everything is said and done in the epilogue, if they had come... If Kanji had turned out to be homosexual, if Naoto had turned out to be trans, then at the end of it all, that is not them changing depending on how society sees them. That is them changing because they want it to. That's an entirely exactly. That is an entirely different thing, and I like and that, I really like that. Yeah, that's a hundred percent accurate because the fact that they have already, at, over the course of the game, accepted who they are and who they believe they are. Yeah. So if they made any change, it's because they wanted to do it, not because of society uh, pressuring them. Yes. So yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and then there's also the matter of golden and. Um, I'm just gonna say it. I don't like Marie. I don't. I don't like okay. Marie. <laughs> it is okay because uh, <sighs> like her either. Yeah. I okay. Here's something interesting, and I can show this to you later. Um, there is a there is an idea that a fan actually made that I'm actually was hundred percent honestly. I was like, I wanted to see this explored. Someone actually had the idea, and they drew artwork of this in chapter and of Izanami being a transfer student alongside the protagonist and being part of the party. Not necess and I don't necessarily think it was in this lens of like, oh, she's an actual like party member in fighting, but more so more in line with like what was going on and more in touch with like what the team was going on. I like that because when you get back, when you go to that whole thing of the true ending of Persona 4 and how like Izanami was about how society doesn't want to see the truth. They only want to care about what's in the fog. They only want to see what they want to see. Everything that she had like been doing in that lens of her being more acquainted with the protagonist and everyone else, to me, that has a little more complexity to it because then you have to ask, is she doing this for the sake of humanity? Or is she doing this because she actually cares about everyone else? Because like during that point in time, the protagonist is going back home. So there's a that that hint of like, is she doing this because of humanity or is she doing this because she doesn't want the protagonist to leave? Mm -hmm. And I really like that idea. Like in regards to like, and especially considering that I think this game actually added some bad endings. This is one where I think you could actually, if nothing else, I really feel like they could have taken a page from the anime for this because the anime, like the original one, if you recall, in its ending, uh, took a page from Persona 3's uh, The Answer and had the entire day on repeat. And as soon as Narukami realized that he, like, everyone was just succumbing to Izanami and just being devoured by shadows, he shut down and realized, you know what? 
life is better in the fog with my friends and just lived in this lie to the point where Margaret had to stab him out of it. In my, yeah. in my mind, I'm thinking of a bad ending where that exact scenario happens, except the whole thing with Margaret is cut out and instead you cut to and a bad ending where it's like Narukami is just sitting on the couch in his home, just shut down, not even responding. Izanami is in the same room with him. The whole, the whole town is covered in fog. She sits alongside him with a smile on her face, being able to be with him, but also crying. Because deep down, she realizes that she can be with him, but it's not him. Like, to me, I feel like if you wanted to go down the route of adding more complexity to your final bosses and antagonists, as opposed to just being, I know what's best for humanity, that's a way to go about it. I'm not saying that's the only way to go about it, but that is a way I think would be, would, could, you could go about it. Yeah, I think uh, the great thing about the anime was the fact that they tried to actually give Narukami some more character because, of course, in the game, he's supposed to be a self-insert. That's why they yes. named him you. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have personality in the game. He had the personality that you gave him. The feelings that he had were just your own feelings. So having those kind of moments in the anime were nice as far as an like anime viewing experience. But at the same time, it kind of makes you think, well, yeah, this kind of would have been really nice in the game, too. Yeah. And also not to mention, it's just like... <laughs> Narukami in the anime is, uh, in my opinion, how to write a lovable asshole. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I I will always love the moments where it's just like, he's on, he's like on a slope with uh, Rise and he's like making origami and says, wow, impressive. She tries making one, it's just, you suck. <laughs> 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 or just him in, uh, oh my god, I forgot about this. They actually had a callback to Persona 3 where they went to uh, GeckoCon and it's just I, I I really thought that was in the grand scheme of things in terms of like Easter eggs and callbacks to the original game just beautiful just mm -hmm. I love that and just the the bar scene in the anime of just dude you can't hug all three of them at once I can because I'm the king just <laughs> <laughs> oh man there's oh, there's a lot of stuff that the anime did I think that uh, really helped elevate a lot of the characters in, in so many ways I love it yeah, I, absolutely. Uh, that's why when I did the, the Persona 4 the Golden playthrough, I incorporated scenes from the anime as well, just because mm -hmm. I just thought that that would make a much more entertaining experience. Yeah. And I felt like the anime took care of some scenes better than the game did. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, pairing them together as one whole media was just a blast. Yeah. I really, I think I really respect that about the anime was that it, you could tell that the people who were making were like, okay, so this is like the what you can do in the game this is kind of what you can also say in the game and everything. It's like, here's what we can focus on, here's what we can add to it, and here's what we can create that, you know, doesn't break too far away from the original story, but it does add to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, overall, yeah, is there anything else you, uh, about the game that you want to talk about? Okay. <clears throat> when it comes to Golden, when it comes to Persona 4 in general, mm -hmm. it is currently my favorite game of all time. Hmm. Persona 4 Golden is my favorite all-time game. And I've played lots of games since, and no other game has beaten it. And I don't think anything will. Because I think when it came down to my experience playing it, mm -hmm. the reason I love it so much is exactly what you were mentioning before, the characters. Yes. Because Persona 4 has something Persona 3 and even Persona 5 does not have, and that is a true feeling of friendship and camaraderie mm. with your teammates. Because when it came to Persona 3, yeah, you would have your social links. Mm -hmm. uh, same with 4 and 5, you would have your social links. But there were some scenes in 3 where it's just everybody is just going out and doing something for fun. Though it would tie in a little bit of the story. Like when they went to the beach section, but that also turned into oh, a storyline with Yukari's father and the like. Mm 
Yeah. Five, you would have quite a bit of those as well, but they would almost always devolve, uh, devolve into uh, talking about uh, the, the the next target or mm -hmm. uh, something to do with somebody's backstory or anything of the sort. It was, they felt like friends, but also it was a business. Yeah. That's kind of how it felt with both three and five. They were friends, but it was also a business. Mm -hmm. Four, it just felt like a bunch of friends that are just doing this because they are the only ones who can. And it's not a business. It's just what they have to do. It's because they know they're the only ones that can do it. But when they believe that they have a time to take a break, take a breather, be kids, be teenagers, mm -hmm. they do it. There are so many scenes in that game where it's just slice of life, just yeah. character development, just enjoying the moment for what it is. Tons of them. Yes. And then Golden added even more. Mm -hmm. It is also the game that I felt where not only did you feel really close to your teammates, but because every single dungeon was based off of them, it delved even further and further into their deepest problems mm -hmm. that I felt like three and five tried well with but i i really feel like four did the most so yeah. that is why yeah the four cast is the strongest cast of main characters as far as their writing yeah and your experience with them and i think that's why i like four so much and why i keep going back to it is because it's a comfortable experience Mm -hmm. It actually makes me feel like I'm going back to see old friends. Yeah, I and no, go ahead. No, uh, um, I I just want to say I was 100% agree with you. But if you want to finish up, mm. it's uh, it, it, I think also when it comes to like uh, the the main antagonist, yeah, the uh, uh, Izanami was weak. I, I will say Izanami was mm -hmm. weak. Her uh, her motivations were weak. And that's fine. The villains were not the focus of this one. Five took care of that in full swing. Yeah. Uh, but four, it was not about the villains, except for Adachi. Yeah. I... A lot of people like to act like, oh, I saw that coming a mile away. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not a detective. I did not see that coming. So the oh twist did surprise me. I'm in the same boat. I... I, I, sorry to interrupt you, but can I can I just talk about this for a second? Because I really want to talk about this. Oh, go for it. Go so, for it. So, I had um, I w when I checked out Persona Four, I was in the midst of like b playing both the game, but also p watching the anime, and I got finished with the anime because it was relatively a lot more, which is quicker than the game. And when I was watching the anime, it was like. I was still, I still didn't figure out who the killer was, and I was just trying to think, oh, who is the killer? And the anime, like, just the build-up, the way it plays it all off is just so brilliant. By the time in the anime, when that sliding door opens, and it's Adachi, and he's coming out, and Narukami and uh, Yosuke, just, like, they, they approach him, it's just like, oh god! Now it makes sense! Oh my god! <laughs> I I could not... I did not expect that in any way, shape, or form. Like, I was... I was somewhat expecting that maybe... Yeah, it was now Atame because he kind of fit the bill. But when it when it came to that moment, it was just like, wait, is he actually... I, I don't know. But, yeah. Um, and I do think... Okay. Adachi is, like, when it comes to his heel turn and everything... Okay. Yes, it does explain a lot of him, but he, he does kind of fall in that line of, like, characters that are really easy to hate. And granted, granted, I know some people are into that, and, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with just asshole for the sake of being asshole, evil for the sake of being evil. I'm fine with those archetypes. Um, I do think it kind of falls flat when you try to go, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a piece of shit, but you know what? I'm doing it because I know what's best for humanity. This is what's best for humanity. It's just like, and that's where I feel Adachi's character kind of falls out the window. 
for me. Yeah, I mean, his reasons for being a villain were outweighed by him actually being the villain. Yeah. But because uh, that the thing, though, is that that's also kind of what makes him interesting. It's like mm -hmm. he was really that petty. He was really that childish. And it just goes to show that all it takes is for somebody to just have it's the Joker syndrome. Just one yeah. really bad day before they snap and then they just couldn't give a shit less about yeah. the rest of the world around them. So I'm not trying to compare Adachi to the to the goddamn Joker, but that was essentially what happened to him. He had a bad day and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck life. Fuck everyone around it. Yeah. Uh, I just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. I would say, in the grand scheme of things, like, comparing to the Joker, like, okay, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, nope, not even a same comparison, like, because both of them are different, entirely different characters, but that said, I would say, Adachi in Persona 4 is just, like, he, well, I, I would say his acting skills are pretty damn good, I will give him that, but I will say this, Adachi in Persona 4 Arena if you want to compare it to the Joker, yeah, there. Yeah, that I can make it more compelling. Because there, he's not trying to hide his pettiness. He's not trying to hide his assholishness. He's a full asshole, and he knows it. And he's full on cocky and full of himself. And it's just yeah. like, I, I don't know. I feel like that's, in its own way, I kind of like that type of asshole. Even, like, the hateable, but also entertaining asshole. And I feel like that's kind of why characters like Joker work. Yeah, he's a monster. He has used people. He has done some fucked up shit. But at the same time, it's just like, he, like, I guess in a way, Jack Horner from Puss in Boots, I think is what I'm trying to get at. A guy, yeah. a guy who is like, yeah, he's evil. He's an irredeemable monster. He's not trying to hide it. He's just like, you're not going to shoot a puppy. Yeah, in the face. Why? It's just, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, what did I do to deserve this? I mean, what specifically? <laughs> <laughs> just that type of asshole. I, I like that. It's why I always like to say that the villains that have a good point or villains that could be redeemable or villains that are like, okay, well, maybe in other circumstances, you could be a good person. Mm -hmm. They have their place, but sometimes you just want that asshole. Sometimes you want the mustache twirler. Sometimes you just want somebody that you can hate. Yes. And... That was Adachi for a while. They, yeah, he went through some redemption through uh, uh, the end of four and then through Arena. But that wasn't the intention for him. Mm -hmm. That was never the intention. That was that was an afterthought. So as much as a lot of people complain about him, just come just how he was handled. I enjoyed him. I thought he was fine. And it was honestly, it was Izanami that felt like the weak one for me. Yeah. In fact, it, to me personally, Amano Sagiri was the better final boss, even though he wasn't really the final boss. Uh, he could have been, depending on your choices. But that to me is peak final boss right there. Mm -hmm. You have a being, he's creating the fog. And he might be acting on Izanami's uh, orders, but he's essentially the creator of the fog. And look at the arena that you're fighting him in. Yeah. You are quite literally up in the sky. All of Inaba is down below you, mm -hmm. reminding you what you are fighting for. Yeah. The music is peak final boss music to me because it is combination of dangerous and also hopeful. Mm -hmm. You're trying your best, you're struggling, but you're gonna do your best to come out on top. Then you have Izanami, who's, all you see is nothing but fog, so you don't even see what you're fighting for, and she becomes a massive monster, and the music sounds just hopeless. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, okay, that's understandable. She's a goddess, she's super powerful, but you don't really feel that struggle. Because typically at that point, you have so many powerful personas that you're already kicking her ass 
really hard. Yeah. And it's only because you watch your teammates around you start sacrificing themselves for you that you're like, oh, shit. Well, to me, it felt scripted, forced. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's it's not a dread that you feel organically. It's a dread that the game is basically trying to be like, OK, you should feel dangerous now because this is the time where we're making it seem dangerous. Yeah, I felt that with Amino Sagiri. I didn't feel that with uh, Isanami. Yeah. And speaking of which, I will have to say 100%, I, we, we were talking about the game, but I will say the anime's finale before the whole thing with Izanagi, spectacular, I have to 100% say. Like, I love how it frames everything of what, like, just Adachi's background, just, it's not just, oh, he's sitting in a room and talking and just laying out his plans while nobody does shit. No, they have to watch everything unfold. And on top of that, locations throughout Inaba change. He can duplicate himself. He has the Reaper on his side. And then mm -hmm. you have Amino Sagiri just looming over you, similar to Nyx, just in the sky, just a giant eye. It's just... I, in the grand scheme of things, if you want to talk about, like, anime original content, like, that is 100%. Like, that whole ordeal, that whole fight everything in regards to like both the Adachi and Amino Sagiri fight just 10 out of 10 for me yeah I think I remember that it's uh it, it, it was more thematic that way of course yeah. they were able to do that so because it was the anime and it was probably a lot harder to do something like that in the game yeah but uh yeah the feeling was still there the feeling of overbearing dread mm -hmm. yeah and it's just and also and um, I'll get to this in a bit about it, but also it- uh Oh. Standing Hold around- Hold on, you're cutting out. <laughs> oh, wait, really? Yeah, you were cutting out a little bit. Oh, am I good now? Yeah, you're good now. Okay, yeah, I, let's be honest, it would also be just boring if the- if- in the anime, all you saw for the final boss was just them standing- Instead of like you know having stuff move around, having care, having locations change, it would just kind of feel boring and stiff in the grand scheme of things compared to what they did in the anime. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but um, pretty much, I think we can move on now, unless there's like something else you want to talk about with Persona Four. I could talk about Persona 4 all day long. I could get to each individual character. I could talk about mm -hmm. the controversies. I could talk about so much. But that would mean that we actually are here for forever. So yeah. I think we could probably move on. This isn't this is this isn't the answer. We've got we're on a time limit here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we can move on finally to Persona 5. Um and I went first that time. You can go first this time. All right. Persona 5. When it first came out, Vanilla, mm -hmm. I, of course, played it, loved it. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed 4, but I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed 3. Mm -hmm. Because it finally gave me what I really, really wanted, and that is some despicable villains that I could beat the fuck out of. Even though it wasn't really, truly, absolutely the real ones, because the real ones... Mm -hmm would wake up the next day like, I feel bad for what I did. I'm going to turn myself in. But still, in a way, what you did fight was cognizant about the fact that they are shadows, that whatever was happening there, they also knew what was happening in the real world. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Kamoshida, for example. He's the king of his castle. He acts, He is the king and the like, but he also knew about what happened in the real world, about what happened with Ryuji and the track team and the like. So that was just enough to make me feel like, okay, well, at least the thing I'm beating up knows about that stuff. Mm -hmm. But boy, I really wish you could actually take it to the real mm -hmm. Uh, the real bad baddies here, but uh, it, it was good enough, and it made sense for the so uh, the situation, the story, and the plot line of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the very least, it made me really hate some of these villains. And the yeah. funny thing is that there were a couple of the main storyline villains that I absolutely despised, mm -hmm. and then the, there were a few that were 
Yeah. There were there were some in the social links that seemed more despicable to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But uh, overall, though, when it comes to villains, they nailed it this time. Mm -hmm. The characters still fun, still great. I enjoyed them. I've got favorites, but just putting it up against Persona 4, it's hard for me to say that I like it more. The gameplay was much better. Of course, the graphics were much better. And this is the game that finally put Persona into the mainstream eyes. Yeah. So I, I'm glad for that. It's got just about as, mu uh, as many uh, spinoffs now as Persona 4 does. Mm -hmm. So they'll probably pump one more out before they finally decide on Persona 6. Mm -hmm. Got to gotta use that Persona 5 money to fund the next game. Too so cool. <laughs> it, it, it was it was fine. I, I enjoyed it. But uh, before I get into anything else, though, I want to hear your take. Yeah, um, I was going to say before, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was going to say to quote Bo Burnham, we know it's not right. We know it's not funny, but we'll stop beating this dead horse when it stops spitting out <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> but OK. <laughs> So, yeah, I I do agree with you on a lot of what you've said, especially about the villains and everything. Um, I think personally, in regards to Persona 5, the one of the big strengths about it is, yeah, the, the story of the characters and so on is just, it has its problems. I do think one of the big things it has over it, even though, yeah, it is because of the newer engine and it's because they had a lot more uh, to do with it, is the gameplay. I do think that. Um... Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to its strengths and weaknesses, I think in its own way, its biggest strength is its biggest weakness, and that is the fan service. Now, it's no secret that this game released... It was in development for a long while, and mention that is because of the new engine. Yes, I get that. Um, and they've delayed it to the point where they finally get to the 20th anniversary. I can understand that. But I think... Again, the biggest strength is its biggest weakness, where it feels like a callback to so many things that people loved and remembered about the original Persona series. Negotiations. Uh, a giant, like, a giant dungeon for you to crawl around, a la Tartarus, and more individual dungeons for you to crawl around and learn about with other characters in Shadow Cells, a la Persona 4. There's all these different things about it. There's just like it's so many little callbacks to the original games, and at the same time, I feel like there's so much of that. In some way, I feel like it is bloated. Like it's not to say that you can't add that stuff, but it feels so like you're doing too much at once. Like the one thing I've noticed about this, like for example, the social links. Uh, like, Oya is, for example, like, I think one of the least necessary social links, because I, if I recall, hers is, like, if you rank her up, her, like, the security level in palaces goes down, but it's just, like, it kind of feels pointless when you use the main mechanic of stealth and sneaking around and everything. Kind of feels pointless in the grand scheme of things for it. Um, and if, again, that just kind of tacks onto the whole bloated thing. And then, speaking of social links, there are so many. Grant, yeah. Granted, yeah. granted, I get the context because it's just like, you're supposed to be Phantom Thieves, you're supposed to go around stealing hearts, you need every tool at your disposal. I get that, but still, you're doing how many social links in how much time? And some of them have a deadline. That's before mm -hmm. the initial deadline. And it's just like, it feels like, God, am I, am I going to be able to do all of these? Am I going to be able to finish all of these? Um, and it's just, it feels, it feels stressful to me at times. Because, like, granted, you know, it is a game where it's just like player choice and everything. I get it. But this is the game where I feel like... It is, it's trying to eat its cake and have its two, where it's just like, yeah, you can do all this stuff, but we actually recommend you do all this stuff. You better be doing this stuff. You better be ranking up your social links. Hey, uh, you're in a multiple choice option. You, uh, are you sure you want to pick this option? Are you really, really sure? It's just like, it feels like 
why are you making like these like player choices and multiple options on the table if you are so dead set on me wanting to go and play this particular route and it's just like again it's like i feel like in a grand scheme of things a lot of what it's doing isn't bad but i do feel like when you looking at it as a whole it does feel bloated especially considering that initially looking into some of the cut content they were initially going to have like reverse and breaks to social links which considering how many social links there are in that goddamn game yeah that would <laughs> uh that be stressful just all of a sudden like you're 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 doing things and then all of a sudden ryuji's like yeah you know what i don't think we should be uh hanging out anymore all of a sudden now you have to start things over with ryuji it's just like oh my god <laughs> but that out of the way everything said pretty much i feel that in the grand scheme of things i like the idea of at the very least its whole message of like its take on japanese society and going a lot of this is kind of wrong and a lot of this why doesn't anyone want to do something about it why don't we make a game and a message where it's just like shouldn't we shouldn't you guys want to change this because that's, to me, I feel like where Persona 3 and 4 had well-meaning messages and well-meaning points, Persona 5 to me felt like a cry for, like, just something to change. It's just like, it felt more than just, oh, this is a message from the game. No, it felt, it felt more like, we can't, like, the society that we live in needs to change for the better. Because a lot of the stuff that has been happening, even though, granted... It is the g game says it's a work of fiction. A lot of fiction tends to be based on real world events, even though it says yeah. it's still so on and so forth. I get that. But still, it's just like, it feels more so like these were the creators going. It's not just a matter of changing an aspect or how we look at society as a matter of, no, we want to in we want to see society improve for the better instead of just people accepting it for how it is. Now that said, yeah. that said, it does shoot itself in the foot when it tries to be morally gray. Like, oh man, are the Phantom Thieves the villains after all? When you're going against people who are quote unquote good guys, but actually like monsters deep down. Right. Yeah. And also in terms of the villains, like, I'm personally, I'm fine with mustache twirling villains in the grand scheme of things. Like, one of my favorite quotes is from a series called The Venture Brothers, where you have this character, like, Red Death, which is supposed to be, like, just this badass version, this badass, not fascist version of Red Skull. Um, yeah. And he's, and he's, like, he ties up this dude who made fun of him for being old and everything, and he just ties him to tracks, and it's just like, before there were buff guys in spandex, there was the gentleman villain. His favorite setup was this. Tying a, tying a victim with three sticks of dynamite. And the best thing about it, you could hear the ticking of the alarm clock. Tick, tick, tick. Nowadays, everything's digital. No sound, no peril. And I was just like, I like that. I, I, I kind of like that. It's just like, if you want to go back to that day of the, the type of villain you want to go for, hell, go for it. I'm all in for it. But at times where it's just like, it feels its whole intention of going for more mustache twirling villains while also going for a more morally gray and very controversial and touchy subject and everything that doesn't have like isn't black and white ironically with something that you're trying to tackle with black and white i feel it is sort again like eating your cake and having it too like and i i really feel like if this i, I don't know i like that idea but i feel like if it was handled and addressed a little differently with how it handles its villains like instead of like uh, one thing i would have been interested to see is like you can still have the mustache twirling villains of the shadows sure but i would have liked to see people like madarame or Kana kamashita or kanashiro utilizing their manipulative their gaslighting techniques still as shadows and when you're in fighting and when you're beating them up all of a sudden that despicable side of them is dragged out and they finally show their true colors like i feel like that would be more satisfying because you actually had to finally push them to actually being like unhinged and finally dropping that facade and you could see them for who they are instead of basically just 
uh, all of a sudden, Kamashita walks up, just giant robe and pink, pink underwear, just, no one's allowed to do as they please in my castle. Just, like, again, fine with mustache twin villains, just, I would have liked to work to actually get that, get them to be complete and are despicable. Right. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. But that said, it's, never, uh, but, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, it's, I was just going to say, sometimes it's good to have the extreme of one side or the other, but for the most part, I think most people would like that balance. Yeah. And uh, it's just that sometimes when the story uh, tends to skew one side, mm -hmm. you really just want a piece of the other side. <laughs> yeah, uh, I understand that 100%. Um, and uh, there's also one thing in regards to it, um, and that is, like, what I liked about Persona 4, I feel like they were trying to capture with 5 here, but the one thing I really do hate, and you touched on this earlier, was that... After a certain point, if you're not, I'd say, Ryuji on the main character or even Morgana or Makoto, and I'll even say Futaba, or not even Makoto, I'll even say Futaba, if you are not these characters, like Haru, Yusuke, and Makoto, once your arc is done, all of a sudden you are pushed to the back. And yep. I... Uh -huh. Yusuke goes from being this interesting artist who has this dark, twisted past to being, I'm so hungry, I, I, I'm I broke, I don't have any money. It's just, ah, the beauty and the, the glory of this art. And it's just like, dude, you came from dealing with a foster father who manipulated you and let your mom die. It's just like, like, I, I it just feel like it is sort of, I guess, flanderization in a certain way. And then there's Haru, who's just like, honestly, for an arc that's all about her, she gets pushed back. And it's... Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just like, if for an arc that's all about her, it's just like, she is supplementary, and it just... Oh, my God. And then Makoto, aside from her inclusion with the fact that her sister is a palace ruler... She, again, she kind of becomes sidelined, and it's just like, I really feel like, it, I, I don't know, it cut back to that whole thing of, like, the whole social links and everyone being pointed out and everything. It's just kind of like, the amount of characters just shoots itself in the foot. But, that said, when it came to stuff like, I, stuff like, in a certain cases, like, the main character and his story... I think it is well done, especially with the fact that the quote-unquote final boss is is actually tied in with the main character. Granted, it is a little confusing. He didn't figure out Shido was actually the guy behind it all, despite the fact that he had plenty of times to figure the shit out. <laughs> and even a f and even like a in-person introduction with the elevator scene, and even seeing him on TV is just like, dude. Uh, can you wake up and see it? <laughs> but I do think it was like, I don't know. I feel cathartic. And like, I, I, I don't like, I, I'll, I'll keep this to uh, like Persona 5 Vanilla because I'm, I'm trying not to spoil anything about Royal. But I do feel like it is cathartic going into Persona 5 and just being able to take out uh, Shido and having that just, that just that feeling of just uh ecstasy just being able to go against this guy not just once when he's utilizing the masses but not just twice when he's uh when he's when he has is uh when he's just doing one-on-one -on -one, but three times in total when he's still not giving up it's just it feels like they were going all out and not to mention i think personally and I had to actually look into this when I was first going into the game. The big twist of Igor, I think, is so beautifully done. Because there's... Because... So, do you know about the uh, original actor for Igor? Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with that story. Yeah. Or so with that... It's not a story. I'm familiar with that news. Yes. So, to those who aren't aware, um, sometime in 2011, around Persona for the anime, or Golden... 
Uh, the original voice for Igor, Isamu Tanaka, uh, sadly passed away. Now, the game was still in development at this time, and there was a lot of news on who was going to voice the new Igor. And when so when you hear that bass tone um, voice, especially with uh, David Lodge in the dub, just trickster welcome to my velvet room all of a sudden mm -hmm. like a strong difference yeah, from what it like, usually sounds like you have people who are fans of the series going oh this is who they got to voice secret that sounds weird that sounds off and newcomers going like oh wow that's never thought he would sound like that but okay and you know they don't really point much fingers to it but as time goes on it's just like yeah okay i guess we this is his voice what did it for me though was and I figured this out as soon as he said the line, God's decree is absolute. I pieced it together, it was like, Oh god, he is the one, isn't he? But I love the reveal of him being like the holy grail because it has subtext to it. Whereas one, they do something more with the final boss being that he's been watching you this entire time, manipulating you this entire time into doing everything that he has want, letting you play around like a mouse in a maze, just playing in his playing in his game, and just everything coming to a close. And then finally, when you reject his offer to just like let society and let reality be distorted, Igor finally coming back. What that says to me is two things. One is that, to me, it's a it's kind of a love letter and a wonderful send out. Considering that I actually looked into this, the original actor in the Japanese they used his recorded voice lines when Igor came back, and I think that's a really beautiful touch. And I feel like that is their way of saying we respected and loved Isamu Taunaka's performance as this character. And we didn't just want to replace him with anybody else. And he, and the new actor being like completely just a contrast compared to the original Igor. And just being completely different and unsettling works into the fact of that you couldn't re just replace Igor. And just how much love and admiration they had for his performance over the years. Like to me, that is just, I love that so much. Yeah, the Japanese tend to really respect their voice actors. Mm -hmm. And if they uh, if somebody passes away, then they typically try and honor that voice actor by having the character not have somebody new unless it's for storyline reasons like Igor or mm -hmm. if it's definitely the same character 100 percent. They don't give them lines like mm -hmm. uh, in Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, Phil mm -hmm. had no lines because the original voice actor for Phil passed away. So yeah. they're like, okay, Phil will show up, but he won't have any voice lines. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really beautiful. And also, I think, so, in regards to, like, the endings of the games, like, Persona 3, 4, and 5, all of them have their, you know, they, all of them have their audience, all of them have their preferences. I think 5 for me is one of the honestly in the grand scheme of things one of the really like just gripping for me because it isn't just like oh you defeated the god everything is said and done no like there's a still the thing where you're still labeled as a criminal and you have to turn yourself in, in order for any of this to even matter and then you have that scene where everyone's just like wait are we just gonna sit by and let this happen and then they decide, you know what? We are actually going to try and save him, but we don't have the metaverse. We're going to have to do this with our own power. Literal months go by. Everyone, including the people that you have maxed Arcanas with, have to pitch in and try to help. Months mm -hmm. go by, and finally, finally, you get that resolve where you're free to go and your criminal record is struck. And even though it is bittersweet that you can't, like, you can't really wash away that impression... It is such a it's is such a thing where it's just like all that hard work and determination finally paid off. Months of work, months of hardship, months of struggle. Finally, you got something. You got your freedom, and that's what I really appreciate. Yeah, that was one of the very few times where uh, they actually felt like 
more than just a team. Like, yeah, they really cared about the main character. They really cared about Joker. It's like, OK, yeah, the, we're getting him out of there. No problem. I mean, it was to be expected. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you said, yeah, they, they did it with their own power. Uh, but it also makes sense for the theme of the game where anybody can make a difference if they want to. Yeah. You don't have to be a Phantom Thief to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and unfortunately that's a point that I feel like a lot of, there are some people not pointing any fingers again, but there are some people that kind of misinterpret the point because they are people that actually think, oh, well, you have to use the metaverse in order to be able to get what you want. It's like, no, the ending shows them without powers. The ending shows them without their magic demon powers. They have to do this by themselves. And that's a really good message where it's just like, if you're persistent enough, if you work hard at it, if you really persevere and you really push to it, yes, it's going to be hard. It might seem fruitless. But if you keep pushing, you keep pushing, you really go through this and know what to do, eventually you can get some form of a payoff. I really like that message. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, uh, the fog of four still exists and probably will forever exist. Yeah. And, uh, the, and it's not just the fog, but it's also the, uh, whole thing around cognition distortion, because then we have the continuation with persona five strikers. Yeah, okay. Persona 5 Strikers, I enjoyed more than 5. I actually enjoyed Strikers more than 5 because I think the gameplay, mm -hmm. just the, the the way that they handled it, because I've never been into that type of game before. I've never really yeah. been into the one versus an army type of mm -hmm. game because it's like, well, they don't really do anything to you. Well, this game, they do stuff to you. They actually mm -hmm. fight back. Uh, instead of just stand around in a circle and then come up and like do give give you a little love tap mm -hmm. and then back away a little, again, it's like well okay yeah I definitely feel powerful but uh, I also feel no challenge here, yeah. and the bo the quote unquote bosses of those games are basically just soldiers with more health. Yeah. This, I felt like, it was an action RPG. Yes. Instead of uh, a like a military game. Uh, 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 a warrior's game. Yes. That's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah. It felt like an action RPG more than your standard warrior's game. You have some enemies that there's a lot of them, but they will actually fight you back. You have to be careful. The combos are satisfying and there are actual legitimate bosses and they will actually do legitimate damage to you. And then, the, of course, the big bosses, the, uh, the monarchs. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. That's with the soundtrack remix, mwah, mm -hmm. loved it. Yep. But what are your thoughts of it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. For a second there, I thought you cut out. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. I. I love it. Um. If you were to ask me, in the grand scheme of things, like, how do you continue? A story such as this I 100% say this is the way to go about it because it's like I okay so I qu quick question have you do you know or have seen hangover uh, the hangover series no okay um so in case anyone isn't aware the movie the true the in the hangover trilogy is infamous because it's an example of a good idea and how to fuck up your sequels because the hangover a lot of people really enjoyed it a lot of people really liked it okay hangover part two came out a lot of people were excited and then this has been parroted but hangover part two is exactly like the first film and a lot of people was like oh, okay well what are they gonna do for this hangover part three it's just like the first one and it's just like oh my god I, oh boy, here yeah. we go again! Yep. And I feel like I've heard this comment so much, is that, oh my god, why are the villains in Persona 4, like, now they're saying we have to forgive these monsters. It's just like, I 100% believe that if the monarchs in Strikers were the exact same case of the Pals Rulers in 5, Nobody would like it as much because it is doing the exact same thing 
the exact same type of characters over and over again. It would not feel like a it would not feel like a continuation to me. It would feel like a rehashing of what you already fucking did. So I think, yeah. and I really like this message that they're trying to go for. I think because what I like is in Persona Five they do mention that characters that have distorted desires are neither good nor bad, on 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 principle or concept. It is just that there are people that tend to go too far with what they do. This explores the people that have distorted desires, but still can be redeemed. They still can be stopped before things get way out of hand. You have Alice, a character that is of that character that is manipulating people who are in relationships to like just break up with their spouses. You have her just bullying her managers, but at the same time, you have her doing the exact same things to what she was being treated with in the past and you have her in the end fully confessing that she's doing she was just guilty of all this and guilty of just doing all of this and in the end she tries her best to at least try and make up for it and atone for it and try again then you have uh um uh, it's not namatame it's natsuhiko I don't know the uh, the the other the other writer who was like plagiarizing all these other stuff, and then you oh, have Natsume. Natsume, thank you, Natsume, who was um he was he's just plagiarizing all this other stuff that even Futaba's like I, okay you're just ripping off these other anime or this other stuff, and you re reveal his story where it's just like oh he was actually manipulated by publishers to that to like write all this stuff. And then he comes out and says, like, yeah, I kind of, I was, uh, like, the the game was in my favor. I was manipulating uh, other people to do, uh, like, my stuff and just, yeah, I was kind of brainwashing people. And I, I'll, I'm gonna get rid of my work, but you know what? I'm gonna start fresh. Then you have Mariko, who I think in the grand scheme of things is the best case scenario of this, where it's just like, yeah. She is, uh, she's treating her workers like shit, but at the same time, you also tell, you also can tell, she is, she's got a reason for it, and then when you realize her reason, you're like, oh, okay, I get what she's doing, but she still has to stop what she's doing, and I love that this game keeps saying that, where it's just like, yeah, these people aren't overall bad, and it is easy to forgive them, but even if you do, that's not going to stop them from doing what they gotta do. You gotta put a stop to this. You gotta put. You gotta nip this in the bud. You have to make them confess so that eventually they can be put on the right track. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, they they were very much uh, also a mirror of the main characters. Like uh, if they had done their life differently, that's what they would have turned out to be. Yeah, uh, it's it's very much the uh, the 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 anti version of each character. Yes. And speaking of anti version of each character, I considered a catchy to be a like I was considering a catchy to be a worse version of Adachi, at least in terms of build up, because oh boy, um yeah. <laughs> Side note, I do want to admit that the whole plan around what they actually thought Adachi was going to do took me so by surprise because I I, I actually had to give kudos because I didn't realize they all fucking knew he was the culprit. Yep, all because of pancakes. That's yep. why the joke exists. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm tempted to say something, but again, it's just like I, I don't want to spoil anything for you and Royal. But, um, I, I will, I, I will say about like God, strikers. This is kind of the reverse, where it's not that I'm opposed to Ichinose being the villain. It's that, dear God, it is the Akutsuki problem. Yeah. Except worse. Because at least with Akutsuki, he was introduced as sort of this nice guy who was overseeing the dorm, who was helping people out. Ichinose, one, two, maybe three or four times she's mentioned in the story. All of a sudden, oh yeah, uh, Emma asked me to stop you. And uh, by the way, I'm controlling Sophia now. Kill the Phantom Thieves. It's just like... Where? What? 
<laughs> it kind of feels like it, it's it's kind of a similar problem to what I had with Five initially, where it's just like it felt like fan service, where it's just like it felt like they had to have a heel turn villain. But I will say this: I feel like they could have kept the things in, but if they had something along the lines, because I was kind of going for this. Because they were going for initially Zenkichi being the sort of like the heel turn villain. They kind of uh, sh they kind of foreshadow is just like I gotta use the fan infuse to get what I want. If they yeah. had the whole thing where it's like either Emma or uh, Ichinose or both kidnapping Akane and going Zenkichi, hey, go against the fan thieves. Otherwise, your daughter's in trouble. I'm just like that could actually work because at least that way I can understand him. Being being on the enemy's side because at least there he has a reason, but they don't do any of that and when and they just end up using Sophia and just like it, it feels like just kind of a shoehorned in attempt at a villain. And speaking of which, in the grand scheme of things, when it came to I would say, I, I honestly I would say in the grand scheme of things, keeping it to Persona Five. Uh, vanilla haru and akechi in terms of awakening and becoming like like their own personas sophia and zenkichi are so much better done because you can see that progression you see zenkichi being like oh i'm just i'm i'm just uh i'm i'm pub sec like we don't t we don't take any shit and going from like this cat spoke my name a talking phone ai and, <laughs> and then he just goes like and then he's confronted with his own daughter. It was just like, what do you expect me to do? I was just trying to protect my family. And then Sophia is going like, no, I want my own heart. I want to become my own person. And just that awakening is just both awakenings legit actually brought me to tears and surprised me. It was just, I loved it so much. Just how well they were done. Oh my God. Zenkichi became my favorite new character mm -hmm. not just for the fact that he was essentially the gameplay style that he had he was a great sword he kind of yeah his moves were like a dark knight mm -hmm. uh from final fantasy but it just goes to show that yeah this this game this series even adults can get in on this it doesn't have to be teenagers yeah you have an actual adult that is willing to become a phantom thief uh, for the greater good and for his family. Yeah. It, and uh, that's why as much as I love Haru, as much as I love her gameplay style, once Zenkichi showed up, I had to use him or at least juggle between the two. Yeah, I don't blame you. And like, it's good you say like for the greater good because like one thing I do want to mention is that technically speaking, Adachi did actually was able to summon Persona and he was an adult, but he was also a villain, so... Yeah, that yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah somebody is somebody who was um, uh, on the side of good. Yes, yes, I do, and I I, I do like that idea, and I, I like the idea of like characters who are regardless of age able to do it. Um, there's actually initially, and I'll get into this a little bit, but there is an anime that actually initially had a reason as to why adults couldn't become. Uh, persona users but i'll get into that in a bit but overall um so as a whole from what we've played overall you have any like likes like overall just likes and dislikes of the franchise or just like just overall things that you think were kind of cool or things that you just kind of like nitpicks just overall when it comes to nitpicks a lot of it has to do with um I catchy mm -hmm. just, just but like i mean i have a lot of uh like small nitpicks but my big ones they count they they have to come with the catchy but uh, from what i understand he's handled a lot better in royal because uh the, my wife and i have uh, discussed at nauseum a catchy and she has fought to defend him and his actions when originally she was on my side when i did the rant but she played royal and she's like Oh, he's so different. And now everything makes sense. And uh, she and I have talked about it a lot. 
And uh, I think overall, I think the nitpicks that I have come with the writing and how things are handled mm -hmm. in vanilla. Yeah. So as I mentioned to you before, how I felt about Royal is that I'm kind of itching for things to finally pick up as far as the new stuff. But mm. it's not happening. It's I'm at Matarame and only a couple of new things have happened that haven't been anything really, truly really significant. Or it's just gameplay changes. And I'm like, where's the new stuff, please? Yeah. So it's like being teased. Oh, the writing is better in this one. You just have to wait a long time for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, the nitpicking is just a lot of writing stuff and a catchy being a big one. Yeah. Um, kind of makes you think, kind of makes you wish that they handled it better the first time through, but it's okay. At least they're trying to address it. Uh, but uh, every, again, it's not perfect. Yeah. No game's writing is ever going to be perfect. Yeah. But um, it's uh, that, that's just ultimately how I feel. I just want... Mm -hmm things to be when it's finally released fully released i want it to be nicely wrapped up in a little bow in every possible way otherwise it's just gonna eat at me <laughs> yeah if um if there is an opportunity later in the future i would like to invite you back to talk about like some stuff like potentially like more on royal but also stuff on reload and just more stuff in the grand scheme of things but Don't. if there is a if there is a time in the future but personally for me i the one thing i've heard before um especially since persona 5 has gotten so big is that i've heard the comment that it's like you can't improve on persona 5 it's like the best it's just the peak and i feel like in some ways people are referring to specifically the graphics and i'm just like no you can this is a series about characters improving themselves, pursuing their true selves, being their true mind. It is a series that has some deep philosophical questions, some complex matters. You can go further with this. And in some ways, I like what it does, but I also don't like what it does. For example, I don't know. Personally, I don't like the romance aspect of this, and that's personally me. And I know this is mainly because I have played other media before, but it's just like, I, I've seen this be done there. Like, personally, and this is to anyone else listening to, if you want an example of, like, more kind of a, an open world, open area RPG co-op that also has some really great take on romance, like, I'm talking, like, this game's whole big selling point is that you start off with two characters that are already in a relationship, and you see that relationship get stronger and progress throughout the game. I would recommend anyone who hasn't or doesn't know play Haven. Because Haven is like basically if you thought the whole thing around romance and everything is just like. Because the one problem I have with Persona 5 uh, and over the years. Persona specifically. Um, but maybe Persona 5 is that what I don't like about the romance in Persona 5 specifically is that it feels like. I do all of these objectives for these particular girls, and then I go like, Hey, I did all this stuff, now I mold your love and affection. And it's just, <laughs> and it's like, I, I, I don't feel like that should be uh, something I should be striving for. I feel like the love should kind of come more naturally. Like, I think I talked about this maybe with, uh, I think I talked about this with Bun, where it's, um, the idea that you separate, uh, like certain objectives or perks about uh, dealing with social links and then making like the romance route and dating everything a separate uh, like route to go down where you can just like do like 10 interactions of romance and then just go down that one. I kind of like that idea, but um, overall it's just like in terms of like uh, a better just handling of the romance aspect and uh, social sim aspect. If you again, people, if you want to see a better version of that, I would absolutely say go play Haven. But aside from that, um, I would have to say ultimately the one thing that I don't necessarily I like and don't like is again like the eating a cake and having it too. Like in to call back about the whole catchy thing, this game, uh, in Persona Five, likes to point out the obvious with 
Futaba. It's just like, yeah, her mom uh, committed suicide and she had all these adults around her that were just labeling her, that were just being mean to her, that were traumatizing her. And then you have stuff like her uncle, which, yeah, um, tch, fuck that dude. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you have cases like Akechi, which, to quote, he said, remember when I, remember when I said my mom was with some good for nothing man? Well, I was his child. And then my mom turned for the worst and died. I was a cursed child for her too. It's just like, that is trying to be artistically subtle with how you mentioned it. It's just like, pick a lane. You have, I'm like, the, the one thing that irks me about this too is that you have, Persona, Atlas, you have a mature rating. You can just say it. You can just say it. Like, cause, cause then you have to speculate, oh, what does it mean? Does that mean like, you know, she got addicted to something? Does that mean she like killed herself? Does that, cause that curse, ch turn for the worse and died cursed child is just like, that can imply a lot. And it's just like, we compare to other stuff that the game wants to say, like specifically, explicitly, stuff like that is just like, it really feels like it wants to eat its cake and have it too. But, and again, just ultimately, I, I in, in the grand scheme of things, it's just like, and again, I'll also recommend a game if you want to, if you want a more kind of like in-depth, like psychological horror-esque type game that kind of does what Persona was doing, but a lot more lower scale and a lot more complex and deep. And I will put an asterisk on this. This game immediately says, if you are not into this, it contains themes of depression, death, suicide, and guilt. If you are not into that, don't play if you don't have to. But if you are interested in some way, I would recommend playing Amori because it basically does what, uh, something along the lines of what Persona was doing, but in a very down-to-earth, real, and very complex and morally gray way. But that's, um, I've, I've already done a podcast episode on that. If people want to go uh, watch that, I'll leave a link in the description. But other than that, ultimately, I think what I really like about this game is just that it screams artistic expression and intent. The character design, the music, the, the just the art direction the just the creativity throughout this game and it's just like i really want to see this uh, i really want to see like wherever these games go i really want to see this uh th this game continue to have that artistic expression so on and so forth i think also it tackles a lot of important and relevant topics mm -hmm. just in its own artistic way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to go along with the whole artistic thing, but uh, it's topical yes. and it makes people think in an entertaining way. So that way, oh, it's fun video game. Yay afternoon. Uh, but at the end of it, it's like, huh, now it makes me change my perspective on things. Mm -hmm. So game series like persona are important for that reason yes and ultimately um since I'm pretty much good with games i kind of want to talk about something i've been hinting about earlier but i do want to talk about the persona anime and manga now just out of curiosity are like how much have you have you like delved into with the anime and manga the i've only seen the original persona 4 anime I've not seen any of the manga. Mm -hmm. I've not seen any of the Persona 5 anime because I heard a lot of bad stuff about it. Mm. And I've not watched uh, the uh, the Persona 4 Golden anime because uh, I've also heard a lot of bad stuff about that. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of uh, my territory. So I'll keep this brief, though. Um, I mentioned something about this earlier, but um, in regards to like the whole thing around Personas and the age group... There is a series that has kind of been divisive, but mainly because um, it's an anime that goes in a different direction compared to the games. But it's a series called Persona Trinity Soul, which is a series that, interestingly enough, takes place in the year 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, but it is a more kind of psychological series. Like, if you're expecting more of kind of the 
God and just I know what's best for humanity types thing. You're not going to find that here. It's a series about a set of brothers who um, it's just like two brothers who are like transferring uh, and moving to a new school and living with their oldest brother who is a detective. And also he's like a captain in the police force and he's also a persona user. And they and it gets really dark because like they they have personas have abilities where it's like they can they tie in personas like pretty much they say kind of anybody can have a persona but they tie in personas to the idea that personas are the souls of people and they tie into like ripping out personas from people like it's really like psychological and even kind of morbid and they have a point where it's just like similar to what shinji was doing in uh three where he was taking pills to control his persona they tackle that more where it's just like personas could not uh like the age li limit was you couldn't be you couldn't get past like being a teenager otherwise the personas would run rampant and you couldn't be able to control them so you had to take these pills to be able to control them and keep them docile and i was like that's actually an interesting idea that they kind of dropped later on, but I thought it was interesting, and honestly, I thought it was also, like, really interesting and endearing to see just, ultimately, this new dynamic where they're, to give you an idea, there is an episode in Persona where one of the characters, they kind of have this whole thing on, like, Personas and Souls, be focused in like a metaphor for drug with drug withdrawal like wow yeah there's like this girl who it's um she's like she's kind of a, she's kind of coming through the draws she is relapsing her friends are just like we don't want you to keep doing this we have to stop you literally the main character gets punched in the face by guys who are like trying to bribe her and everything in order to do this in order for, to get her to stop. And it's just like, she constantly feels guilty that she's leading her friends to the point where she relapses one more time. The main character has to stop her again, slaps her and says, look, I'm done. I've tried. I'm done with you. And it's just it is heartbreaking because it's just like, you see what these characters are trying to help her and she keeps relapsing. And it's just like, it is dark it is like really thought provoking it's just like it feels legitimately uncomfortable and real and it's just like wow i just like i look at this and i'm just like i didn't expect this from something around persona but other than that you also have um stuff like i mentioned this earlier but if you anybody if you are interested in persona one but you don't like the dungeon crawling aspect of a game read the uh persona one manga because I guarantee you the Persona 1 manga adds does something similar to the Persona 4 anime where it adds the original story. There's this whole new story arc for the main character. I won't give it away in case people want to read it. But it is legitimately a thought-provoking and complex story that I recommend anybody who really wants to like delve into Persona 1 story really get into it. As for Persona 3 and 4, they cover the stories of the original uh, games without going into the newer ones like FES and Golden. Um, Persona 5, the manga, it does some new additions. It's still being made, but um, it decided, hey, um, I know we just came out. I know Royal just kind of came out mid-production, but and we're already through like the Kaneshiro arc. Let's just add in uh, royal content and then go from there. So it feels very shoehorned in, so I'll say that. <laughs> it does. But um, overall, um, yeah, in regards to the Persona anime, uh, 3, the movies are a good recap of the original while adding in some new stuff. 4, uh, the original anime, really good. Uh, Golden, it has its moments, but yeah, it was overall not as good. 5, uh, the big problem was... Okay, I think the big the big problem was just, like, kind of, whereas with Persona 4, um, you can kind of see it, where it's like, Persona 4, it is this, like, countryside town, middle of nowhere, out in the sticks, there's not a whole lot to do, there's not a lot of places, and as such, um, I think with the creative team, that gave them room to really explore and add new stuff. Persona 5, complete opposite. Big city. 
so many people walking around, so many buildings, landscapes, all of this different stuff available to do in Persona 5. And I feel like watching it, the biggest problem with it was that they were trying to cram all of that into the anime. And I feel like that's what bogged it down because they were like, okay, uh, we gotta do the, uh, we gotta do the Kamashita arc. Okay, we gotta get this done. Now we gotta do the Monorama arc. We gotta do, we gotta get this done, this done, this done, this done. Just packing yeah. so much that it feels jarring. Like, there's no time to breathe. <laughs> yes, yes. There's literally a moment where it's before the horror arc where it's just like, uh, the, the protagonist comes back from Hawaii and they're, laughing at uh like morgana with just a uh, flower laurel on his head immediately like like futaba sojiro and uh the protagonists are laughing immediately cut to uh makoto what the principal is dead it's just like what what uh, wh yeah <laughs> just right out of fucking right nowhere they did like with the kutsuki is like well we don't have anything more to do with them so uh, yeah Let's write them out. <laughs> at the very least, in terms of, like, the game, it at very least, like, took its time and knew when to do it. But no, it's an immediate cut. Like, them laughing, principal, it's dead. It's just like, that is so jarring. Yeah. And the one thing I will say that I like about the anime of 2 Persona 5 is that this the one, the one part of the story, which a lot of people aggressive, uh, overall agree is one of the worst parts of the story, which is the... Uh, Ryuji and Morgana part done so much better in the anime. Yeah. Because, like, context for those who haven't played Persona 5, uh, they get into a fight for no legitimate real reason because Morgana's kind of a stuck-up uh, narcissist. Uh, and Ryuji, throughout it, even though you can kind of understand it, he's kind of a condescending asshole. Because instead of just trying to apologize and trying to let things go, he's just like, Yeah, I don't mind if you're not human or free, useless. And then just, it just kind of stops there. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, all of them are good. In the anime, though, like, both Ryuji and Morgana are on the same wavelength where they want to take down a Kumra. But they have this infighting where it makes it feel like they legitimately fought like they're friends. Uh, and before they go check out Kumar's palace, it's just like Ryuji is just complaining about Morgana. It's just like, oh God, what does he think about going? What is he thinking going in there alone? God, doesn't he know his own limits? And just on. It's almost cute how worried you are about him. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have stuff where it's just like their dialogue is a lot more. It, their dialogue is a lot more like kind of downplayed, where it's just like. In the, the whole scene with them in Mementos is just done so much better, where it's just like you actually feel like Ryuji, well, definitely still an idiot, is trying to do his best. Where it's just like, look, I, I'm sorry, all right? I just, I, I, I don't, I can't really do stuff by myself, and I'm not really good at words, and just like, how do I phrase this? It's just like, I, look, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm begging you, please come back, and I promise you're useless, I won't say anything. Oh, shit! <laughs> and, He's still an idiot, but in that context, you get that he was trying his best. And in that moment where it's just like Morgana says, I want to stay with you guys. This is my home. Ryuji finally says, look, you're not useless. You're our friend. I am so sorry for how I treated you. Just that is what I wanted the entire time when I was looking back at that. I was just like, I'm glad the anime saw it that way. And I'm glad they were able to do that. Yep. Yeah. Basically, it was uh, it was something where they probably received a little bit of backlash on how it was handled, so they felt like that was a good opportunity to fix it. Yeah. And um, uh, I haven't been spoiled on a lot with Royal, but I have been told that it also handles it better in Royal. I am not gonna spoil anything, but let's just say, um, I guess a little is a word. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to I'm trying my best not to spoil anything, but it's OK. It's OK. Uh, I would say don't worry too much about it. OK, I will find out anyway. Yep. I'll... Um, I guess in regards to Royal, the one thing is um, you said you were like finished with Madarame, right? Yeah. And the reason why we haven't gotten very far is only because of the fact that one, Bun and I are doing it together mm -hmm. and two. I just haven't had that much of a drive because of the fact that there hasn't been enough of a difference. I so 
when it went from Persona 4 to Persona 4 Golden, mm -hmm. there was enough of a gap between me playing that game and the new one and enough new stuff happening all the time <laughs> that I felt more invested. Yes. Now it's basically, okay, there's a new scene where a uh, new character comes in, shows how badass and uh, awesome and uh, how best character and uh, uh, ignore all the other girls on the only important one uh, that she was. I know everybody loves her and already I, right now I haven't gotten much except Mary Sue from her, but I'm only this far into the game. Uh, mm -hmm. the second part is that, uh, again, another scene with her with a cleanup scene after school. And then the uh, new social link with the uh, the doctor, mm -hmm. which uh, has been the most entertaining yeah. with how obsessive he is over snacks. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it's basically been the exact same stuff mm -hmm. with maybe a little bit of a difference in the dungeon and a little bit of difference in the boss fights. Yes. But it's still at the same places as before. So it's has there hasn't been enough stuff. There has it Royal has not felt new and expanded enough for me yet to feel like the purchase for it has been justified. I 100% get it and I'll get in I, I'll, get, I'll get into it a little bit later. But um personally for me since you said you were at Madarame I think personally it's just um Again, like, where if I was in your shoes, I would say yeah. But I think personally the one character that, quite frankly, I think, honestly, it's a shame I don't hear talked about more. Jose. I... Ah. I love that precious cinnamon bun in a Mario Kart. Bun feels the same way yeah. she, she wants to adopt him. Yeah, I just, it's just... He, I just love his moment. It just his introduction is just, it's just like, that's right, pretty lady. It's just like, <laughs> he called me pretty lady. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, are you tired, kitty? You feel grumpy. I'm not a cat. I'm not grumpy. Oh, are, are you hungry? <laughs> and just, I, I love. He's just so adorable and precious. And it's just, I, oh my god, it's just, it's a shame I don't really hear too many people talking about him. He is just the, uh, he's just the adorable, precious. <laughs> oh my god. I, I think um, I think nobody really has a problem with him. Mm -hmm. I think the problem just comes from what he's there for, and that's to collect more things. And uh, I, I think that's the other problem that I'm I'm getting with uh, with Royal is that a lot of the new content is get more stuff. Yes. And yeah, there's that's more as far as like gameplay. But it feels like padded, bloated gameplay to the point where Bun actually finished a game of Royal and started a new one and says, oh, you don't have to worry about collecting anything. I collected it all for you. So you, all you have to do is enjoy the story. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you for that, because if it was just collect-a-thon, like, was it interesting or fun? She's like, no, it was literally just gathering stuff. Yeah. Um, and I will say this if you haven't been told already. Um... Uh, since you're on New Game Plus, I just word of advice if you haven't uh, checked it out. Don't go into the Thieves' Den until you're, like, well into the new content. Because, um, it does, it will spoil certain things about uh, the game later on, regardless of whether or not you actually are there. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so, um... yeah, just, just, uh, just a tidbit. Stay away from that. But, other than that, um... Personally, like, yeah, I will admit it is sort of that collect it is sort of that collectible, like, uh, hey, you got these many stamps out of these many stamps left, only this many to go. Yes, I, I do think that is sort of a, a droll, and I won't lie, it is kind of, it wasn't exactly fun. I'll say, though, considering the fact that it was one of the, it is, like, out of the original game, it is one of the additions that legitimately feels like... You can do that in your own spare time. There's no real time limit. I kind of feel like I can give it a little more leeway. Because it's not like, oh man, um, you have to get all of them before the game ends. Otherwise, you're going to have to start all the way over. It, it never felt like that. It felt like, 
Yeah, I mean, you can com you can collect stamps from me or not. I mean, I'll give you rewards, but, I mean, you don't have to. It legitimately felt like it was one of the things where it's just player choice, where it's just like, if I'm traveling through mementos, yeah, I, I can do that. It's, yeah. uh... It's still early. It's yeah. still early, so... My, my opinion might change, but... I, you, I guess the best thing I can say is you heard it here for first, folks. It's going so slowly because I'm bored to death. <laughs> uh, I'm... Um, but uh, it, it's going to be done. I got to get it done. I want to get it done. And Bun really wants me to get it done because she is, is even like, yeah, the beginning is so slow. It's so boring. I promise it's going to get better. It's I, I truly felt like I just finished with vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started Royal, so it's just like yeah. I'm just playing the exact same game all over again, yeah. making the same jokes, making the same comments. So it's like, how can I make this new and refreshing? That's the whole reason why I brought Bun with me on this ride yeah. is because uh, I want to avoid making the same comments and jokes. And sure enough, if it wasn't for her being there, I would have already checked out. I would have already been making the same jokes. It would have felt like you're watching the same Let's Play a second time. So thank God for her being there. And uh, I will keep pressing on because I promised I would. But I hope more stuff happens soon. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just going to like, I, I, I think I'll leave it off on that because I don't want to say anything that might give you any ideas of like, hope or like despair don't want to do anything of that <laughs> yeah i i will just say um yeah rome wasn't built in a day uh so yeah just it, uh, it's, it's slow going i'm gonna i'm gonna keep on waiting and like keep the, on keep on powering through like the game says take your time yeah <laughs> uh, oh man I, it, it'll happen but uh i think I'll be more excited about uh, about Persona 3's remake because mm -hmm. it it would have been like 10 years since I played 3, and it's a full-on remake of it, so I'm going to be more yeah. excited for that, I think. And Persona 5 Tactica, because it's just a brand new game. And I like Tactics games, so. Yeah. Personally, and um, we're we're going to be wrapping up here because there's uh, there's three other things, but I imagine they'll be, uh, they'll imagine they'll be pretty quick. But personally, for me... Um, I am simply excited for Persona 3 Reload because personally, in my opinion, um, I am kind of tired and on Persona 5 and the first set of five discussions because I've just, it, personally for me, it's not a matter of like, oh, I've consumed so much Persona 5 content over the years. No, it's just a matter of like, to be honest, um, it's a big reason of why I wanted to add you on here. It is so little interactions of, like, actual discussion, actual praise and critique of the series and games. Just, it was, I've been in so many interactions where it's just back and forth and back and forth. It's just, oh, I, I, I have to like this. Or, oh, it's just like, this sucks. It's just like, I, I just wanted to have a decent discussion with the series that I like and criticize so on and so forth. And I'm real glad I invited you on here because it's just legitimately this whole conversation has been so it's just been a real nice breath of fresh air for me so I, oh that's good yes so I, I, i'm glad to have been able to help with that yeah trust me it's just like i i was i've been trying so hard to like legitimately gather my thoughts and not and, and not passive aggressively like sh throw shade at any of the persona fandom or just bring in stuff that i've had to deal with towards your front door because i'm like I know you're not here for that. I know you're here to discuss Persona. So I'm just like, let's keep it in the same wheelhouse. Maybe talk about some things that have happened in, in regards to it. But let's just keep it in the same wheelhouse. Don't get off too off topic. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I... And ultimately, in regards to Persona and everything, um, the last three things I want to talk about. Uh, first thing off is just... Something that happened a while back that uh, has concluded. What are your thoughts on the 25th anniversary? I forgot that it happened because <laughs> there was there was really nothing of note. There were yeah. watches and socks. I remember that. 
Yeah, so, um, you're not alone, because unless you lived in Japan, yeah, um, the most I remember about it is, hey, there is a Persona-themed hoodie. Okay. And, oh, what about this? It's like, oh, we have, that was like, oh, we got vinyl records for Persona 3 and 4 and 5 music. Like, okay, they're expensive as hell. And it's like, oh, we also have this record player, which is also expensive as hell. And it's just yeah. like, cut to the flip side of Japan. The, I've heard there's like concerts, there's special merchandise like wallpapers and posters. There is like, they ha I remember they had like an ice cream themed like maid cafe where it's like they were persona themed and it's just like, that actually sounds cool. Wish we could have gotten that over here. <laughs> but nope, no, nope, yeah. unfortunately not. Yeah, to be fair, I don't really know the situation. And I don't really know like, cause I don't live in Japan so I can't speak on behalf of them. I don't know whether or not uh, Japan was satisfied with it. All I know is, from my perspective, they got more than us. So, yeah. And when it comes to a lot of the clothes, uh, music, well, a lot of that we can listen to online these days. Yep. And uh, when it comes to clothes, just pick whatever picture that you really like and put it out on a heat transfer paper. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I've done that before. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, in regards, just like. The one thing I was hoping for, and I've gotten flack for this from some people, but the one thing I was hoping for is at the very least, the same thing that they did for Persona 4 when they were initially coming out with it was just a small teaser. Like, a small teaser. Like that chair with the chain cuffs, your slave yeah. wants emancipation. It's just, yeah. give me something along those lines. I don't even care if there's not a release date yet. I don't care if there's not, like, uh, like oh, we have a we set gameplay for it. Just... Slight teaser is saying something regarding Persona 6, just confirming it, because they're all I've heard from them is articles saying like there is help wanted posters over in Japan and saying they're increasing and changing up the game. It's like hearsay, but nothing of concrete evidence saying that the game is being worked on. And I think in the grand scheme of things, when it came to Persona 5 Tactica, I felt like you guys released a Persona 5 Chinese mobile game, and I'm just like, I personally just, can we please get something else other than Persona 5, please? I I don't blame anybody if they're excited for something like Persona 5 Tactica. If that is what you want to play and those you're interested, hey, more power to you. Personally, it's just, I'm, I, I, I like something a little more different. I like something a little more other than the fair share of fan thieves. That is just me. Well, at least the Chinese uh, mobile game has a brand new cast. Mm -hmm. And uh, at least all these spinoffs are different game types. Mm -hmm. uh, except uh, uh, instead of having... Well, no, never mind. They had their dance game. Um, well, I mean, they didn't have a fighting game, but uh, 4 and 3 did. Let's take, let's four. Well, at least they're expanding on gameplay styles. Yeah. I kinda... So it's, it's not just uh, it's not just the same thing over and over and over again. So I'll give them credit for that, mm -hmm. as long as they're fun, entertaining, and at least gives a little bit more for the fan thieves to do. But I think at this point, they after these next releases, they should go on ahead, take the money that they've been earning from Persona Five and their spinoffs, and be like, okay, here's our funding for six. Let's work on that. now. Yeah, I. Uh, what's the color? What's the color for six gonna be? Uh, green. Yeah. We got, we got, we got blue, yellow, and red. We gotta get the green I, in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get to for some six. I um I do have a talk on that for a bit, but um there's another media discussion which I feel like is um kind of a moment of contention, which in recent years, especially considering uh the thing that happened with Discovery and HBO. And that is the whole thing around media preservation. And that is not just, like, Persona 4 the anime, because Persona 4 the anime, for me, used to be on, like, platforms like Hulu, and then it just got taken off, and I have not been able to find it. The only physical copy I've been able to find is, like, 300 bucks on Amazon. And it's just, like, I... Like, no offense to the actor, but I'm... I don't care if it's signed... By Johnny on Bosch, I'm not paying 300 bucks for an anime. Like, no, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of that stuff you can find online these days. 
Yeah. Um, and there's also the whole thing around the older games. Um, and quite frankly, it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm glad at the very least with Persona 3, like, they're bringing stuff like Portable up to the... They're bringing stuff like Portable to platforms like Steam and Switch and Xbox and PlayStation. Okay, that I can find. But we have really yet to see anything regarding, like... Even if they aren't really well received and everything, we've really yet to see any, like, follow-up towards, like, the original uh, Persona games or some of the spin-offs. Like, yes, we have Persona 4 Golden on Steam and other platforms. We have Persona 5 Royal on Steam and other platforms, sure. But we don't have, like, the originals or the, uh, just, or, or even hell, we don't even have the, like, Persona 3 FES on, like, Steam, Switch, and Xbox. And it's just, like, granted, I do feel like it kind of comes in that case of, like, being, putting way too much money for paying the exact same game you just played, but with uh, basically what I amount to is a DLC expansion pack, but I, like, it, it just would be nice to have that option available so that, like, people can just go back and really play and live out these games instead of just having to resort to emulation and everything. Yeah, that's a big point of contention for a lot of people, a lot of companies, but uh, I support the ability to have any game still available if it was made for sale then it should still be able to be obtained uh if it's some form of consumable media but uh it's gonna be a while before we see something like that happen yeah yeah um I, other than that um and we've kind of talked a little about this but uh what I honestly, let's wrap this up with our thoughts, considering that, you know, we uh, have gotten some news on Persona 3 Reload and everything. I do want to talk about thoughts on Persona 6 and or future hopes. Now, it should I should put up a disclaimer for this. Um, none of us, neither of us, work at Atlas. So, we don't have the ins and outs to, oh man, well, this is what the next game is going to be. No, this, is, this is all just this is all just like hey this would be kind of cool and much like the games themselves what we say here in regards to what happens to the game in the future purely coincidence so take everything we have grain of salt exactly so do you have any thoughts on persona 6 like just future hopes or for the franchise well model? Well, right now, it's still following the trend of teenagers in high school gathered together to take down an evil. So I'm going to be certain that they're going to be doing something like that as well, because mm -hmm. uh, Persona 1 and 2 also did that. Mm -hmm. um, they'll probably have the same kind of gameplay elements that made the series popular. So social links, confidants, whatever you want, uh, whatever they're going to call it. Mm -hmm. Time with people to form bonds and such and power up your personas as a result. What I'm hoping for as far as the game, though, I just want there to feel like with four, a really close bond with friends, having just pointless, needless slice of life moments just for the sake of fun and entertainment and spending time and getting to know your characters. But at the same time, I still want them to keep on going on this pathway of there is an obvious evil go going on here and uh, we need to go and stop it. So I guess I've, I'm really looking for something that kind of combines all the best elements of 3, 4, and 5 into one game. Okay. Um, that, that's what I'm ultimately hoping for. Uh, okay. But uh, location, it could be anywhere. I do not care where it is. Uh, the cast... As long as they're fun and entertaining, I don't care who or what they are. I just want it to feel like a best of kind of a game because mm -hmm. I feel like that they've uh, they started with three, they improved with four, and then they didn't do things with five. I just want them to take the best of all three and put them into one game. Yes. Uh, personally, for me, like, I've talked about this a little bit more. The way I see, like, um, in terms of personally how you could improve a game is more so exploring, like, new territory 
in different ways and like different interpretations so on and so forth because like hey this is a brand new iteration like yeah sure we're gonna keep elements from the original game sure i mean like that's why pokemon really hasn't changed up its formula in god knows how long but and it's just like it changing up some things to make this iteration feel familiar yet standalone enough i feel could really benefit it like the one interesting thing and i like one interesting thing that there is a minor scene in royal i won't spoil it but there's a minor scene in royal that um i imagine you'll see it when i you'll see it when you get to it but it is a scene that really gave me this atmosphere and this tone of a horror game and i was mm. looking at it and i was just like this like oh my god if Persona 6 wants to go down the route of being more horror-centered, I would love that. Give me some... You know some... what? That sounds great, being the horror fanatic that I am. <laughs> yeah. Like, I kind of like... I like the idea. Like, especially considering that it has a lot of psychological tendencies. I like the idea of kind of combining the focus of, like, 4 and 5 in together in some ways, where the new dungeons are sort of like a reflection of like the people the people themselves like i kind of had the idea where this time around where it's like you know a lot of uh things in four where it's like it was focused the the dungeons and everything the characters it was focused the shadow selves they were focused on like essentially what society judged and labeled them as and was sh pushing all of that back in their face and they had to come face to face with it personally I kind of want to see a Persona game go more down the route where you focus more on like legitimate issues and problems that the characters have to deal with, like certain phobias, like certain disorders, certain matters, like having a character that was bullied and and like having them come face to face with that reality in something like a dreamscape where they can't actually like get away from it or anything. They have to be confronted like a nightmare and them coming to terms with like trying to get that power in the dream and then this is an idea i kind of feel like would be interesting if you had the personas be have the users become in danger of losing control and even sort of becoming one with them sort of like how you can kind of become too drunk with power and lose control of yourselves and in its own way, having the characters try to calm them down and coax them to some form of sanity so that they can get back to control. I like that idea because it kind of goes, for me personally, kind of goes the idea that personas and this power is not good nor bad. It is just simply a tool. It is based around the person themselves on how they use it and just what they do with it in regards to like who they were. So, like, you could have, like, someone who is, like, afraid of being isolated and everything, gaining this persona power, but losing control by trying to restrain and capturing and kidnapping people around them to not leave them. Like, something like that. Something a little more that ties more into the power that ties more into the characters themselves and exploring their depth and psyches. But other than that... Personally, again, if you if the series wants to go down the route of like fleshing out its system like social links and dating sims, but in the grand scheme of things, unlike five, lowering the amount of like social links and focusing on a core group, not even in the party, like a core group of social links or confidants and really fleshing them out, I really feel like that th these are like areas you could really improve on with the actual game and even more so make a lot better than five because the one thing i am anticipating when six comes out is the inevitable comment of it's five was better or it's not the same as five so on and so forth that's going to definitely happen yeah because to a lot of people percent of five was the first mm -hmm. and it was an impressive game for them so there's going to be a lot of bias yeah uh, uh, there's a lot of bias towards firsts. Mm -hmm. So, time will tell. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, we'll, we'll only know until we see it happen. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess uh, we can only just wait. Exactly. And uh, we'll be waiting at least another decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And on that note, I think we are good to wrap everything up. Thank you so much for joining me, Kagado. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, and if you want to plug anything, uh, like any channels or any social media, feel free to do so. Well, I mean, the only thing I would plug is just my channel, which is Kagato the Final Boss on YouTube and technically on Twitch, though I'm mostly YouTube. And I stream pretty much every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday with the occasional edited upload. So uh, if you want to see a grown man scream at video games, you know where to find me. Yeah, and personally for me, um, I am, at the, as of recording this, I am currently on hiatus because of life and everything, personal matters. Um, and if I am correct in terms of my schedule, which uh, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not, it's a gamble. Life is uh, sometimes a bitch. But if I am correct in this, this whole episode in the grand scheme of things, should be out by December, at least, I, I can definitely say, before Persona 3 Reload comes out, but in the grand scheme of things, um, I, yeah, this should be out, um, do, but please do feel free to follow me on YouTube, uh, at the time I should be up and running again, so follow me on YouTube, Twitch, I got a Ko-Fi if you want to support me financially and everything, because I'm trying to become, uh, like, full-time artist and everything, and that's what I'm going to school for. And other than that, um, I do have a portfolio on my art station where you can check out check out all my art, including this uh, this artwork that I uh, spent a lot of time and effort on to making, which will be available as soon as this episode comes out. And yeah, pretty much that is it. So thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Kagado, again for joining me. Oh, you are very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and um, yeah, we will see you all uh in the future whether that be soon or later so take care <laughs> and peace bye bye